Well, hey guys, Brian Johnson has come out with a new video on a $1,000 skin treatment that he is doing. Uh, he's also doing something to his hair and I'm gonna react to it. My name is Brian Johnson. And for the past three years, I've been trying to slow my speed of aging as much as possible using data and science. Today is my favorite face treatment. So when we started Blueprint three years ago, I had really bad skin damage. I was in the sun all the time as a kid. I never wore sunscreen. So when we started Blueprint, we did my baseline measurements to look at UV damage, browns, reds. It was really bad. I looked like a zombie. And we've been working at skin quality for the past three years, trying all kinds of things. And today I'm gonna to share with you my favorite treatment. I don't know. Look, you look amazing. I have my bra, uh, I put them before the hair. Okay. And then delivery back to exosomes. So same as the face coming again. All right. Okay, so what we've got going on today is exosomes. What are exosomes? They're being touted as the next hot thing in aesthetic medicine. Exosomes are little vesicles that are released from cells. And think of them as like little communication vehicles. They contain cargo that includes microRNA, messenger RNA, lipids, cytokines, growth factors, proteins, and they're released and they bind to receptors on the surface of cells and are taken up by those cells and can influence things like the formation of new blood vessels, cell maturation, cell division. They also may influence things like inflammation and cell death. They can be sourced from different cell types like macrophages, endothelial cells, keratinocytes, which are the main cell in your skin's epidermis. They also can come from bodily fluids like saliva, menstrual blood or your blood or plasma. They are very much an area of active ongoing research with regards to wound healing, flap reconstruction, a variety of inflammatory conditions like lupus, atopic dermatitis, psoriasis, and of course, they're really an area of interest in terms of skin rejuvenation. 3D human skin cultures, so not actual people, but models of human skin, suggest that exosomes offer the potential to uh, improve collagen production, as well as to suppress the activity of enzymes that destroy our collagen. So that certainly could have a anti-aging benefit for one's skin. But when it comes to exosomes, you need to bear in mind that the vast majority of the research out there is preclinical, meaning not on actual people in human clinical trials. And that's really important because what happens preclinical can be totally different from what actually happens in the real world when you try and use this on human skin. Not to mention you have all of these questions that need to be answered, like what source is best? How do um, exosomes source from different cell types, how does that make a difference for the skin? Like um, in theory, couldn't it potentially be harmful? Because in, in theory, these exosomes can guide cell behavior in a maladaptive way. It's very interesting to me that this is something that is being so hyped up because it's not something that truly has a lot of good clinical data to back it up. And I think in a lot of cases, you could just be encountering snake oil. That's not to say that it's not a really exciting and a cool area of research, but to say it's ready for human use, I think is premature because there are just so many unknowns in this field. These are for the face. So we do this Tixel therapy, which is thermal mechanical ablation. It opens up channels in the skin for the exosomes to be absorbed much more efficient, uh, effectively. We also have exosomes for the hair. We're going to use a 1927 nanometer laser same thing is drug assisted laser for the hair. Uh, we're doing this instead of PRP, so it's less invasive and hopefully more effective. The protocol is getting my face really, really dry. So I just wash my face, so I'm just drying it off. It's more efficacious when it's dry. So it's uh, 81 titanium little spikes that go in like little pyramid shapes that stab the skin at a depth setting between you know 100 and 1,000 micrometers depth. So it goes pretty deep. Uh, you know, it goes through the epidermis, which is around 100 microns deep. So you're going to affect like the base dermal layers, which is important. And yeah, it heats by 400 degrees Celsius. I don't know what that is in Fahrenheit, maybe like 10 billion Fahrenheit or something. 
Tixel is a non-invasive thermomechanical device that basically delivers heat very precisely to the upper dermis. So it uses a titanium tip that has these little tiny pyramids on it that can precisely deliver a little short burst of heat precisely into the upper dermis without causing spread of heat and damaging surrounding structures. It's basically a type of fractional skin resurfacing that is delivering heat and it can be helpful for not only improving collagen and improving wrinkles, it's specifically approved actually for improving wrinkles around the eye, but it also shows promise for lightening up dark spots on the face, so it can improve skin tone. And because it's basically creating these little channels, it is also a way to allow for enhanced drug delivery. So they're using it here basically for both rejuvenation, I suppose, in terms of improving collagen, and maybe improving any sort of age spots, sunspots, but also for enhancing the delivery of the exosomes, which may or may not do anything. What does it feel like? Uh, it feels like, feels like you're getting a hot sear on your skin, but it's very quick. The pain to benefit ratio is very high. It, it can be a little painful and that varies from person to person. Um, some people use a little bit of topical numbing cream. Other people are able to tolerate it without any topical numbing. And then you can do like topicals as well at the same time. Uh, exosome, uh, medicine chemical stem cell exosomes typically, they can uh, half the recovery time as well, which is nice. It works on all skin types more easily. There's no light involved. And again, you're not gonna get the hair removal so with many lasers, it's hard for guys to do it around the jaw area because you're gonna remove it. Tixel should not affect the hair. It's just going to the very top part of the dermis, delivering very focused heat. In contrast, laser hair removal, you know, it uses a very specific wavelength of light to target the melanin in the hair follicle to destroy the hair, and so you get, you know, reduction in hair. With the drug delivery option as well, you can um, kind of personalize that to the patient's skin condition because it creates these open channels depending on which settings you use. How long do you think every six weeks or four weeks for this? Um, depends on your recovery. We are using exosomes, so it could be four weeks. You know, in the manual, they do say if you're going on very high settings, then more in the, you know, it's four to eight weeks kind of range. But you don't need anesthetic, so that's another reason why it's more scalable to the whole body. You can only do so much topical anesthetic normally from lidocaine, otherwise you get overdosed, it's very dangerous. So in theory, it is quite slow, but you can do a large body surface areas in a single session. Tixel can also be helpful for improving smoker's lines. It's actually been shown to be helpful for treating dry eyes, which is something I forgot to mention. In contrast to like lasers where you have to wear eye protection, you don't need to wear eye protection with Tixel. Um, and you can use the Simachilla, which we've got here, to cool the skin down to minus 10, minus 20 degrees, uh, cold air blowing on it. And that provides the pain reduction. So they're using cold temperature to reduce pain, which definitely can be effective for energy-based devices for controlling pain. It's a wrap. Yeah. They're all wrapped up. Like just endless fun. I love every second of it. <laughs> Genetically, I should be bald. I still have hair, which is great. We're trying to increase hair growth, and we've been trying things like liquid minoxidil and uh, laser diodes for a hair cap and PRP. We're trying to move on to better stuff, and now we're trying exosomes. This is the next step. So minoxidil is FDA approved for androgenetic alopecia. Um, and basically it's something that you apply to your scalp. You can buy over the counter without a prescription. And there's a lot of data to support its efficacy for both men and women with androgenetic alopecia, which is basically the hair follicle miniaturizes. It turns into a baby hair. It's not scarred or anything. So it has the potential to resurrect and grow a healthy hair. And the way minoxidil is thought to work is perhaps by improving improving blood flow to the follicle. Through that improvement in blood flow, it helps cut down on hair follicle miniaturization and it also increases the duration of the growing phase of the hair cycle. You use it daily and it typically takes around 12 weeks before you start seeing substantial improvement. However, you have to continue using minoxidil to maintain those results. So once you stop, the hair loss will resume, usually in about four to six months of stopping. Topical minoxidil is generally well tolerated, but it's kind of a pain to use. 
uh, and it can cause contact dermatitis irritation in the scalp. Uh, however, some people don't respond to topical minoxidil because the drug itself is not in the active form. It requires an enzyme in your, in your hair follicle to convert it to its active form. It's called a cell flow tra transferase. And it's thought that some people, the enzyme is just not as active, so that's why they don't get good results with topical minoxidil. That being said, the combination of topical minoxidil plus topical tretinoin can get people over the hump and get better response with minoxidil. It's thought that tretinoin may help with the sulfonotransferase activity, or alternatively, tretinoin may also just help with enhanced penetration of minoxidil. That's topical minoxidil. Some people will see results, others will not. And then he mentioned um, low-level laser therapy, I'm assuming, laser cap. Um, red light therapy can definitely help improve androgenetic alopecia, especially when used in conjunction with minoxidil. You can get better results than minoxidil alone in a lot of cases. Or for some people who don't respond to minoxidil, they try low-level laser therapy, they get good results. So low-level laser therapy with these laser caps, I use one myself. Um, I have been sponsored by the company in the past called the iRestore. And basically it works through something known as photobiomodulation. Similarly, it helps to improve blood flow to the follicle, to inhibit hair follicle miniaturization, and to improve the growing phase, so you get increased density and increased thickness with continued use. Then there's PRP, which it sounds like he tried. Um, so PRP basically involves taking your blood and spinning it down to uh, a fraction that is plasma and like growth factors, and then injecting that either into your skin or your scalp. And a lot of people see results in terms of improvement in, in the case of the scalp and improvement in their hair growth, but other people do not. And PRP is one of those things, kind of like exosomes, where in my opinion, it got hyped up without really good like clinical trials behind it. There's still a lot of unknowns with regards to PRP, whether it be for the scalp or for any sort of skin condition, you know, for the face, for example. Um, but a lot of derms offer it, do it. People swear up and down by it. You know, there are some people in the in the field who are who think that PRP is a complete scam uh, <clears throat> and that it's just been pushed out and hyped up prematurely in the absence of good clinical trials, and that there are way too many. Uh, unknowns with regards to it for whether it be hair growth or for the skin. It's one of those things, in my opinion, it's gotten a lot of hype, but there's so many unknowns behind it. And it sounds like he didn't get good results with PRP. Some people do, you know, some people do. I, I don't know if, if it's really all the PRP. I, I have no explanation, like I said. There's a lot of, there are a lot of gaps in knowledge with regards to PRP. I view exosomes as PRP 2.0 because it's the same kind of thing. We've got a lot of good preclinical studies going, really you know, interesting area of research, but so many unknowns, but at the same time, it's already being pushed out as something that you know is the next best thing. And it's already being heavily marketed, publicized. You'll read about it in magazines, you know, prominent dermatologists swearing by it up and down, but honestly, it's like, where, where are the clinical trials with this? In my opinion, exosomes are super overhyped and to get excited about them is premature, which is interesting because I thought this guy was like all about data, but I guess he's willing to just like stick to preclinical data and not actual stuff in humans, which, you know, that he's gonna do what he's gonna do. This is his journey, I suppose. Um, but at the same time, you know, you have to understand that preclinical science does not often translate to humans. If you try and translate preclinical studies prematurely to humans, you might discover that there are adverse effects that um, you didn't know about. So keep that in mind. You know, people on social media like to hype up a lot of things that are largely based off of preclinical stuff, and it really can do the public a huge disservice. The thing about exosomes too is like it's a very costly endeavor, and it's the kind of thing you have to presumably continue to receive in order to maintain the results. So, you know, definitely not something at this point that. A, is indicated by any large clinical studies in actual people. B, it just seems, you know, kind of out of, out of reach for most people. So we're going to use a 1927 laser, open up the channels for the drug delivery, and then deliver the exosomes, which are made of... Yeah, but a combination of 10 billion exosomes per vial. These are anti-age MDX exosomes. 
and it's a hybrid cocktail, GMP grade, a mix of human bone marrow stem cells and human umbilical cord stem cells. Here what they're getting at is like the delivery, right? The thing about topically applied things for hair is you have to factor in, it's got to localize down in the follicle. So there are things that can enhance penetration. So the 1927 nanometer laser is something called a non-ablative fractionated laser. Fractionated or fractional basically means going and treating fractions of the skin, what are called microthermal zones. It leverages the principle of selective photothermal lysis, where basically the energy is delivered to selective chromophores in the skin, um, and that energy uh, it's converted to heat to basically have a desired clinical effect, whether that be improving dark spots, um, whether it be um, resurfacing the skin, or in this case, enhanced drug delivery. Really small study looking at 10 Korean men with androgenetic alopecia did show an improvement in hair density and an improvement in hair shaft diameter with this laser treatment. They also tried combining the laser treatment with growth factors. They got an even better improvement above just the laser treatment alone. Uh, now they're not using growth factors here. They're using, again, exosomes, which as I said, is kind of a an area where there are many unknowns. Not that growth factors um, for hair, hair growth are a huge area of established research, I digress. But one thing to point out is that with this study, while they did get an improvement in hair density and hair shaft diameter, hair thickness, um, again, once the treatment was stopped, that slowly regressed. So it suggests you need to continue to get these laser treatments. So it'd be nice to know like, well, how does this compare to doing at home low level laser therapy? Um, is it you know more cost effective to just buy a laser cap and do that at home versus coming into the office and getting this expensive laser treatment all the time? Who knows? Is it significantly better in the long run than just topical minoxidil? I mean, it's the same issue, right, with topical minoxidil, presumably, although, again, we have very little established research um, to say, like, once you stop this, are you just going to go back to where you once were? If that's the case, then just stick with minoxidil, you know? It's cheap, and you can buy it in the store. I'm really wondering if I'm Frankenstein. Oh, I'm your Frankenstein. Uh, what was that article that came out? It was like, uh, Dr. Strangeblood. <laughs> yeah. That was my name. <laughs> yeah, there we go. There we have it. And then start here. Yeah. You divide it into sections. Okay. And then I need to get in here too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh. Okay, like cool. That sounds good. Yeah. One of these cool. Look cool. Yeah. Like you always want to look cool when you're doing a therapy. Never mess around with not looking cool. And with this laser, you do need to wear eye protection. One, two, of that. Fine. So much better, Ollie, than microneedling or, yeah. or PRP. A really good day for therapies. We've tried a lot. We think Tixel is probably the most effective therapy we've done on the skin. We have two more to go, and then we'll see how we are doing. All right, so $1,000 skin therapy boils down to using exosomes, which again are little tiny vesicles released from cells that can help with communication and can influence behavior of neighboring cells in terms of improving blood vessel formation, uh, cutting down inflammation, helping with cell death processes, improving cell proliferation and maturation. But you know, the devil is in the details and the details have not all been worked out. Um, anyway, he's trying it um, and he's using Tixel or he's using the um, Moxie laser, the 1927 Thulium uh, non-ablative fractional laser to enhance delivery. He's using these for presumably uh, skin rejuvenation to improve collagen and to improve his hair. You go in for a treatment like Tixel or the Moxie laser and you're gonna be upsold for this booster package of exosomes. And for the consumer, you're probably under the belief that those exosomes are gonna offer you something additional above and beyond what the energy-based device by itself has offered. And I've gotta tell you, we don't have good clinical research to really support that. I think it's just a way to make more money. But if you're harvesting you know, umbilical cord stem cell exosomes and putting them on your skin, is it really gonna have that same outcome to the cells in your epidermis? I, I really just don't see enough research on that. Everything I've seen so far has been preclinical and in animal models. So at this point, I think it's kind of a cash grab if I'm being honest. 
But let me know in the comments what you guys think. Um, Brian Johnson's routines are always interesting to look at. I hope this video was informative. I did see a lot of requests. Please talk about exosomes. So I thought this would be a good opportunity to chat with you all about them. Now, I have done a video already reacting to his full-on over-the-top anti-aging skincare routine, which I'm going to put on the end slate. So check that out if you missed it. But if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends. And as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.